This is Lisanne. What are you going to teach us today? How to make a self-portrait like Rembrandt did. Lisanne, are you ready? Yes. Going to take this tube of yellow ochre paint. Going to apply a little bit in my bowl to give the ground a slightly warmer hue. I'm going to use a burnt sienna. I'm going to apply that right here. Here we go. So then we're just going to apply it on the panel. Try to apply it as evenly as you can. You're going to paint on top of it so it doesn't have to be perfect. huh? Let the ground layer dry for a bit before you continue with your next step. So now we're going to make a carton. So I'm taking red ochre and I'm just going to apply it as evenly as possible over the, uh, over the copy. So this is the copy from Rembrandt itself. This is what I need, approximately. Then, I'm going to apply it here in the corners, in the upper corners, and I'm going to apply it on the bottom. So we take our panel. Now we're just going to apply this on top of our panel. Now I'm going to take a pencil and we're going to trace all the most important lines. I'm going to start here with his vest. Well, we continue up his outlines, his facial features. I'm starting with his difficult to see. Eyebrow. And what will help me later on is if I also uh, draw an out outline around the shadows. Yeah, I think we got it. Let's check what we have here. I think this is exactly what we need. Fantastic. Now I'm going to apply the undermodeling. For the undermodeling, Rembrandt used transparent brown pigments and applied these directly on the ochre ground. I'm going to do that with burnt sienna, burnt umber, raw umber, and the slightest hint of black. Apply a little bit of water. Let's try it. Always look at your example. You see at the right here, there's a little bit more light. So we leave that little open. You want this to help later on, don't we? What I like for the face is now to draw the main features. Okay, I'm going to draw the most important outlines. Here we go. This is his collar. Little piece of his neck. I wish I could look in the mirror and see a Rembrandt. From the lighter parts to the darker part, actually. A little bit cooler tone. 
on the right, it's cooler. Especially the right of this painting is slightly cooler. It's like there's a shadow, but then a different one from the one on the left. You see, here it's a little darker and it's, it starts under his nostril and onto his chin. We're just going to follow that. Darker here, darker near his ear, darker here. Here it's really dark. Huh? Now for the darkest part, I'm going to mix burnt umber with raw umber and just a hint of black. So I think this is enough for us to continue with the background. The background is a combination between black, yellow, and zinc white. But this is not quite a color yet. I need just a slightly hint of this color, which absolutely no color Rembrandt could, could have used. Thick brush. I'm going to alternate these two brushes. So from dark to light and then back. Take a close look at his brush strokes. Here they go slightly up. Here they go up. Here they go the other way. Here they go up. Here they go this way. Around his face he seems to have a kind of halo. It's clearly lighter. And you let the background shine through in some places. That's exactly what you need. So So I make the background slightly lighter to make a good transition from this part to the other part. And now here on the left, he does something really nice. He seems to alternate brush strokes like this and then on top of it and then he seems to almost push uh, the tip of his brush into the wet paint layer and it creates a kind of structure. Slightly lighter, even using a bit of titanium white for the opaque color. Then he goes this way, the tip of his brush. Now you see this is lighter than this part, so now you take this part to match it. You see, this part here needs to match this color. Yeah, what, he, what Rembrandt actually did over here is that he leaves a small part open over here and even though that small part, it's part of the composition and it's super important for light uh, and how he, how he renders light and how you experience the light in this painting. Here he has neat brush strokes. So that's, they go this way and then they go this way. And also that direction, you'll see, makes a lot of difference in how you experience the painting. So that's what you, I hope you get as a take home message. Thing. So, the right of the garment has a little bit cool, dark color. So, I'm going to take my umber, which is greenish. I'm going to take my black, which is bluish. Yeah. If you take a good look at this painting, 
you see that the left part of his clothes already has vivid brush strokes like we saw in the background. And when we're here, you see the most remarkable thing. Rembrandt uses the background as a mid-tone to make a transition from black to the highlight. And how he does that, I think, is by building it up. So here he starts making little stairs, as I call them. Just ever so subtle. Make another stair. So what we're doing now is we're adding the highlight. We use white, zinc white. Rembrandt used lead white, which is based on lead. However, this is highly toxic, so please use zinc white or titanium white instead. We want you to be around for our next episodes as well, right? Titanium white combination because it needs to be opaque. Not too opaque though. A little bit of ochre because it needs to be a warm light. We're taking a hint of this black. Yep. Just that one like this approximately. This one he just brush stroke to this way. So that's the start of the highlight. This part brush strokes this way. Then you accentuate the stair again. So, the stairs is important, then actually the gray part, and then you put a highlight on top. Now we're going on to the color. We're starting with umber again in the shadow, so that's here. Again, make sure your previous layer is dry before you add another layer. Now we're going to work our way back from the lightest part to the shadow part. One, two, three. And then we go on. Here you go, that way. Now I'm going to make a smoother transition. You see that there's a little line over here. And there are some openings over here. Well, these openings, that could be uh, either the tip of his brush or the back of his pencil. I'm going for the last one because I like that most. <laughs> With a little downstairs. And down. And then here he continues this line by making this slightly lighter. Making this slightly lighter. So paint as a texture, if it's really droopy, you can draw lines with it. And I, I think that's what he used. You see a little of this, this line right here, that's what I need. Yeah, next step, the head. If you want to mix a skin color, there's three colors you need exactly. That's red, ochre, white and i like to add the slightest touch of raw umber lots of white here we go ochre and then i like to add a little of this cadmium red this might already be too much no this is all right if you want a darker hue you can just add more ochre or add more Red, like that. From right to left, I'm going to build up the neckline. So now I'm using raw umber, burnt umber and black. And I'm trying to leave part of the shadow open. You're playing with your colors. Huh? You're building it up, that's too dark. Then we're going to the lightest color. I'm going to use this yellow color for that. I'm just adding the slightest hint of red. So here his lines go this way. Yeah. 
just going to do a little bit like this because you want a background to shine through. Let's continue to his face. I'm going to build his skin color up from light to dark, then from dark to light, and then I'm going to do the mid-tones. In his face, he also uses alternating brush strokes, so he goes this way, he goes this way, here he goes that way, here he goes that way. So if you're trying to do this with me, take a good look at the real um, photo. So here's one streak down, then here you go, like this. And here's it's a little darker. I know there's a little more ochre there. Then there is light again. There it gets a little more reddish. I'm using a uh, burnt sienna for that color. Here you also have a little bit of this color. To a darker part. Now I'm going back from the dark to the light to his face here. Now this part is really gray so we take a little bit of black, take a little bit of white, zinc white, building it up just like that. A little blush. So now I'm going on to a darker part Small parts you leave open. Then with burnt sienna, I like to make a transition. Again, we need um, a skin color and we're working up towards this um, burnt sienna color again. Come on. Better. Then we're going onto his chin. There's no such thing as a line, so we make a little transition. There. Then the right part of his face. Here he leaves a little bit open. So for the nose, I'm going to make a slightly purplish hue, lake red. So now I'm going to black and lake red. The black serves as blue. If we go to the eye, yeah, you don't know which way he actually looks at the first instance. We tend to think that the eye is white. Actually, that's not true. As you might very well know, I'm not sure. The color of the eyeball is actually gray, a grayish color. So I'm going to use a little bit of my gray that I already prepared. And I'm mixing it with the brown color. Here we go. And then a the gray color. Starting to use a hint of black even. Now he's starting to look at us. This is a little contrasting to the rest of his face. So I'm going to darken it up. I'm going to take a broader brush. To continue with the hair, Lisana uses a panel that has dried already. I like to build up the color from dark to light. I'm going to make a very cool color with a raw umber. Don't be afraid to use your brush and the hairs of your brush in it here. Looks a little light. 
really black. Then the slightly cooler color with the raw umber. It already has a slight hint of burnt umber. Then we are going to use the burnt sienna. Leave some parts open from the background. Burnt sienna alone. A small highlight. Burnt sienna I'm now using with regular sienna. Go. So. So now we're off to the fun part, which is actually very inventive of Rembrandt. We're going to use this part, the back of the brush. And if we look at the painting itself, here there's three strings of curls hanging down. So that's suggested by scratches that are made with the back of the brush. Let's scratch. So let's start here. Approximately you go here, that string, so to say. And the second one is ending right here. And of course, the harder you push, the more comes off. And then here's the last one. Then we're going to slight little scratches here. So that's here, here. Going up here, this one. Then here, there's more happening. So, right side, left, right, left. Look at the painting again. So down here, there's two more. The difference between the hairs over here, the frizzy hair that's standing up, and on the left, he has painted the hair. So I'm going to take a smaller brush going to take a little bit of this color between amber and black a little bit more black over here shadow of the curls that looks pretty good lisanne are you there yep i think so wow Thanks for another lesson, Lisanne. 